Surface drops new hardware, Xbox drops in hardware sales, and Microsoft, they also drop the ball. Happy Friday, friends. Happy Friday. We are, the, the, the month of March is nearly over. Next week will be the official last week of March, which means it's also springtime, which means the birds are chirping, the sun <clears throat> is shining longer. And um, I guess that's really true unless you're in the southern hemisphere at the end of the day. However, happy spring, everybody. Hopefully your spring is going well. I am having a wonderful week. Hopefully you did too. And let's dive into the tech news and the Xbox news because there's a lot happening in Microsoft and in the world beyond. So let's kick it off here with Surface and Microsoft's Windows slash Future of Work event that they held, uh, what was it actually, on Thursday of this week. So kicking it off with the hardware because I think that's the most sort of things that anybody really cares about are the Surface Pro 10 and Surface Laptop 6. These things are rocking the Intel Core Ultra CPUs NPUs are also included, which is why I keep saying if you're getting a new computer, make sure it has an NPU. Otherwise, you're effectively, you're going to be holding yourself back. Uh, so make sure it has a Windows, uh, make sure it has an NPU. And in this specific arrangement, it's helping to enable the Windows Studio effects. It also has the coveted Copilot key on the keyboard, which I know we just all really want. Anyway, it has that. But the Pro 10 also has a 33% brighter display with an anti-reflective coating. Now, this is not the OLED display that will likely be coming uh, in May. There's going to be another consumer-focused Surface event happening in May right before build. And so that's probably where, not probably, that is where we know that more exciting things like the ARM stuff will be announced because, let's be honest here, this Microsoft's Future of Work event was kind of odd. Uh, it was For one thing, it was as a Microsoft enthusiast, it was, I don't want to say boring is probably the right word, but man, it was, it was lacking energy in any meaningful capacity. Like if you watch this thing, it felt like all of the presenters feet were cemented in place. Now I'm pretty sure they were standing in front of a green screen and that's probably why they're like, you cannot walk around, but it like, they felt like it felt like talking to, or not even talking to, but listening to mannequins. And if Microsoft came out at the end of this and would have done like a splash screen says everything you just saw was actually an AI persona and AI people, I would have absolutely believed that because it was like, like it, it just felt not natural, uh, a lot of it. And so I'm not saying the announcements weren't good. I mean, they were okay. The, the Surface stuff is by far the highlight. Everything else for a Microsoft enthusiast that's probably listening to this, there was nothing really else new. It was just showing how you could use Copilot. And my God, Microsoft, for the love of everything, they need to get better demos of what Copilot can do because it felt like it felt like you're watching the Cortana stuff all over again. I'm not even joking this. They showed how you can go to Copilot and say, update my background. And then this, the settings panel opens with the wallpaper and you can pick a new wallpaper. And there was also like empty my recycle bin. It was like, it was like optimize my PC. And then Copilot just magically deleted a bunch of stuff, which by the way, is a very scary thing when the AI is just deciding, well, these files aren't needed. Now maybe it's doing something smart and maybe I should give Microsoft the benefit of the doubt. And it's only deleting things from one OneDrive potentially that are doing files on demand so like they're not gone they're still in the cloud but I'll give you guys some heads up I get real nervous when something other than me is deleting stuff and I'll be even more transparent I get nervous when I delete stuff I, I have a bad habit of leaving things in the recycle bin for a long time let alone having AI delete stuff now it's fair to say well then Brad if you thought you had better ideas what should Microsoft have done for this event and shown off the true capabilities of Copilot here's what they should have done they should have taken this spec sheet and all of the images of the Surface Pro 6 and the Surface Laptop 10 just put them in a folder just any folder and say Copilot go make a PowerPoint presentation about these two devices that I can use for this announcement event and then use that on stage like that should have been their demo that that's all you needed from Copilot pilot that would have been enough that would have been magical and super but they didn't now there are some other demos in there but like none of them were anything anything whatever they had some data that i'm sure it was a research event that they paid for and they're like look you'll save up to 10 hours per month and i'm sure that's true for some people if you're on development side absolutely like i I can save 10 hours a month just using uh, ChatGPT and saying, write me Python scripts that will do this. And I will give you a perfect example of how it can save me time. I'm sure I've mentioned this demo before. My favorite one is I have a script. So we launched a product this week at Stardock. For those listening that don't know, I run the software team at Stardock. We launched a thing 
called Object Dock. It puts a modern dock on your Windows PC. It's one of our legacy things. It doesn't matter. That's not the point. But anyway, so when we make a website or an app page, we have like, it's like 19, 20 images or something like that. And they all have to be cropped with a 4% rounded corner. And so what do I do? I have a Python script that I created using ChatGPT. I select a folder and it crops every image with a 4% rounded corner on all of it. And it saves me time. Microsoft didn't show anything like that that would be helpful, uh, at least in my opinion, during this event. So it was a very stoic event, and I, I, I candidly sometimes wonder why they did this. Like, couldn't they have just waited on these things? The other thing, too, which I, I neglected to mention, is that these new pieces of hardware, specifically the Pro 10, has an NFC reader, which is actually a pretty big deal in the enterprise space, and they're more serviceable at the end of the day. And so I don't want to just dump on this Future of Work event. But it just wasn't inspiring. It was a very, just, it just wasn't their best put on event. That's, that's what I'm going with here. So, um, you know, that's that. Uh, other things happening at Microsoft. There's a new AI organization led by people not from inside the company. Well, they're inside the company now, but they were not. Uh, they were acquire hired, if you will. So, so this comes from, uh, I think it's Inflection AI was the company. And it had a DeepMind co-founder who DeepMind is over, uh, was acquired by Google. And so is Mustafa Surliman, I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly, is joining Microsoft as a vice president or an executive vice president and will report directly to Mr. Nadella. And this is a new AI org at Microsoft. Microsoft has very much proven that they will open up that checkbook, my friends, when it comes to anything AI. So much so that I'm wondering if this might not bite them in the butt at some point in the future because of how they are doing this. So they agreed, Microsoft, this is this all kind of transpired over like a 48 hour period. Because this was really weird because the company that uh, Mustafa was at, like this inflection company had raised, I, I believe it was something like 1.5 or 1.8 billion dollars. And then all of a sudden, like the leaders of these people are leaving and they're going to Microsoft. And what about all those other investors? So it, the oddity here is that apparently Microsoft is agreed to pay inflection or this company about 650 million million dollars to for exclusive licenses to a lot of their stuff at the end of the day and it's being reported that this is making whole all of the other investors microsoft i believe had invested a significant chunk of money in this company as well and so it's a choir hire sort of thing but it's very clear that microsoft is just snatching up like a hungry hungry hippo anything ai related in the market that might give them just the slightest competitive advantage whether that's actual like you know foundational models or brains that can come into their company and help them leverage their co-pilot they're being their windows and everything else so there's been a reshuffle at the end of the day bringing people over into this new ai org uh that's like bing and there's parts of windows and there's parts of little bits of everything uh that microsoft is doing and it's clear that mr nadella is willing to spend the bankroll of or spend their war chest to make sure that microsoft is well positioned in the ai space which is that sort of queer queasy queer <laughs> queered is the word i was about to say for queasy and weird uh feeling of like is this all kind of legal because it's like microsoft's a trillion dollar company and they're, they're they own own quote if you will parts of ai or something like that and they're just snatching up these other things like it's everything else and so do they i don't know you know i'm not a legal expert i don't believe it's a monopoly but it all still feels kind of like um it just doesn't feel like it's right as rain or something i don't i don't have the quite analogy here so anyways that's going on uh speaking of other things microsoft is doing they are bringing more little widgets to the lock screen which is an interesting thing so they've got weather and it's ba basically if it's a widget that's in the widget panel i'm guessing it can be brought to your lock screen or it will be in the near future which probably means that msn garbage will probably make it there at some point as well and i don't mean like sports scores i mean like the oh 17 reasons you might get a flat tire while you're driving to work tomorrow sort of post that we always see um that adds zero value to your actual part of your day so yeah, there's that. Also happening this week, which was related to Microsoft, GDC happened, NVIDIA was there. And of course, they had a packed crowd of big name executives. Microsoft was there, obviously, and they announced their new Blackwell chips. And Microsoft, of course, has a partnership with them, just like every other company on the planet. NVIDIA is selling these things faster than they can make them. And they're charging lots of money, and NVIDIA is going to continue to do that. Uh, the other th interesting thing, definitely from like the Beyond files of Microsoft, so Apple finds itself being sued by the DOJ for a mono <laughs> monopolistic 
practices. I cannot enunciate right now. Uh, for being a monopoly, effectively, when it comes to the iPhone. So there's a couple things in here which we'll dive into. And I, I'm not going to sit here and be a legal expert, but part of the arguments here, they say, are suppressing the quality of messaging between the iPhone and competing uh, platforms like Android. So basically talking about iMessages, um, on iOS, uh, being on Android, or maybe on Windows Phone, it'd be hilarious if they had to produce something that would support, win- they're not gonna make, they're not, Tim Cook is not gonna save <laughs> Windows Phone, but definitely putting iMessage on other devices is sort of a sketchy area right now they find themselves, and also limiting the functionality of third-party smartwatches with iPhones and making it harder for Apple Watch users like myself to switch from iPhone due to compatibility issues. Now, these are both things that, I kind of tend to agree with. So the question becomes, Brad, if you could go buy a Samsung Galaxy S20, we'll just say, because this is a court, it's going to say an S28, so the thing doesn't exist, but you know, I think we could agree it probably will at some point, that had native iMessage support. So the whole stack, the whole iMessage stack, exactly as it is on iOS, and you could use your Apple Watch on that device as you use it on your iPhone. Would I buy that? Um, There's a, you know... I would be much more tempted to do that. I honestly would. And so I don't think that the the merit behind this uh, this uh, suit is, is unfounded. But, you know, I'm not going to be a legal expert here. All I'm saying is that if an S28 did support iMessage and FaceTime and it had an Apple Watch, I, I would be more tempted to try it. So uh, we'll go with that. So... Switching on to the gaming news, because the gaming news is also impacted by this Apple DOJ stuff. So also part of the Apple DOJ suit is uh, the blocking of cloud streaming apps for things like video games that would lower the need for more expensive hardware. So the hardware side, you know, let's just push that to a side. We know that Apple has blocked effectively putting Xbox Game Pass natively into the store for outrageous reasons. So on that side of it, again, the suit is going to impact Microsoft in various ways. One of them being like, look, like if, again, it's going to be five years before this actually closes or whatever gets resolved, but Microsoft very much in their ability to put a third-party store for Xbox Game Pass, which would lower the cost uh, for consumers by being able to play those games on devices and not have to buy something through the App Store is of merit, is of merit, I should say. So keep an eye, eyes and ears and peeled on that. So, other things happening in the Xbox world. Uh, Xbox has discontinued that rewards app, so they're they're not discontinuing rewards, at least not yet. However, they're combining all their rewards experience into the rewards hub. So, if you're an Xbox rewards user, be on the lookout for that. Also, be very aware that this new overhaul is going to make it harder to earn points. So, it's not going to be as easy to redeem things going forward, and Microsoft kind of acknowledges that in some of this, their blog posts at the end of the day. But yeah, keep that in mind that it has been overhauled. It's not going away, although it's it's being changed. So uh, other things happening in the world of Xbox. This one is much more on the downer side. So console sales in Europe have appeared to have cratered uh, for Xbox. So according to uh, GameIndustry.biz and in their recent reports, they said the PS5 was down 2%. And this is hardware sales and comparing year over year. And that's likely thanks to Helldivers because that game has done exceptionally well. However, it's worth pointing out that Sony did acknowledge that they are going to miss their PS5 sales target. And this is globally. They announced that last month during earnings. Remember, they cut it. I want to say it was by like 4 million units across the year. Switch, uh, which is a seven-year-old console, was down 17% year over year, but Xbox was down 47% year over year. And Xbox, I think, is what, three and a half years old? So, uh, yeah, that's that's rough for Xbox. And so they've got to kind of figure out, like, what is going on here? Um, because a 47% drop, and now Microsoft will say in the background, it's like, judge us on our, on our subscription services, not on our hardware sales. You can say that all you want, and that is you know how they report things. But at the end of the day, console sales are a key driver of those subscriptions. And if your hardware is cratering 50% roughly year over year, you got to figure something out. Like you, you got to, that is not a healthy and or sustainable thing. And so, you know, we already know PlayStation 5 Pro is going to happen this year. Now, I firmly kind of believe that that's mostly going to attract people who already own a console. They're going to potentially upgrade or something like that. However, we don't know what's happening with Xbox. Uh, we don't quite know. However, there is something happening, and we don't we know. We don't know. But a, a reportedly, a new Xbox dev kit was certified in South Korea. 
And so if they're doing that, that means they're getting it through so then they can get it out the hands of the developers here in the near future. And so maybe that's an Xbox Series Pro. We, we like This is real speculative because it, all we know is some piece of Xbox hardware appears to have been certified in South Korea. And you could, you could say, Brad, that could be a handheld device. It could be. It could be the Brooklyn device. It could be that other Ellie Wood. It could be those devices. We don't know, unfortunately, uh, because that's the nature of like these... <laughs> South Korea is not the one, the South Korea uh, equivalent of the FCC is not the agency that's supposed to be re revealing this information. So it's still very, very speculative as to what we are actually seeing go through there. So questions of the week, always my favorite part. Questions, everybody loves questions. Well, I love questions. It's favorite. I love it. So Matt Thinus says, how terrible would it be if the Xbox does not do a Series X Pro slash Ultimate? Just feels like they shouldn't. Just feels like they should not do it. The price is the most problematic thing. Also, they already have two SKUs. And which, what is the sales pitch for the device? Unlike the Xbox One generation, the sales pitch was 4K. Your thoughts? It is, I, so I agree with you on the, the messaging here is going to be difficult. Because let's say they do, a PS5 Pro is not immune to this either. So th this is an analogous relationship here. It is, what is the messaging? Because if they come out and say, well, it's going to be 4K, 60 frames per second, no matter what. And that is the baseline stat or, or figure for this. You're not going to have to choose between performance mode or visual fidelity mode or whatever you want to call it. That's fine. That is a they're very much a marketing message, but that's kind of what we thought the Series X was going to be from the get-go, was that, that you didn't have to choose, but now here we are, and we all know you do have to choose. And so at the end of the day, this is still going to be a Series X or PS5 generational product, so games aren't going to be specifically designed for something like this to take advantage, really, of that extra oomph. Now, they, there'll probably be titles that do, like, quote-unquote, kind of make it better, but they're not going to be complete overhauls. They're just going to be, look, you got higher clock speeds, which is what has come out from the PlayStation 5 because the specs don't look to be as good as what was originally rumored or leaked. Um, they're actually looking like, like a clock speed bump and the GPU, a little bit of a bump uh, appears there. When we were seeing those, what was like 33 T-flops or something like that? It was like 3X what they're doing today. That was actually the GPU. So it was like, whoops, uh, not that. So is would it be tragic if Microsoft didn't do this? So here's the thing that I think is more important. Um, they need to announce something. I don't know if it has to be a better something. So if they announce a Series X, a discless Series X that is more efficient and cheaper, I think they would probably be just fine. It's the lack of any hardware announcements this fall is what would be kind of uh, frustrating from an Xbox perspective fan because it's like PS5 just got a Pro and we got... A three year and a half year old console who's cratering um, in sales. So they need they need something. I don't know if it needs to be a pro candidly at the end of the day because like hey we just we just need these things cheaper because that is the driving metric. And someone's gonna say Brad, there's the Xbox Series S. That's the cheaper thing, but we already know that it's not enough to be that sustainable. And so you know getting the Series S down to even cheaper, which could be difficult, although they've sold it on sale for certain prices. Uh, we'll find out. So. Good question. R R Rafik says, Hi Brad, what do you think about the claims made by the Department of Justice in its lawsuit against Apple? Personally, I don't find them strong enough. They could have made much better arguments. And the second, does putting PC always on standby affect the performance of Windows? So the first question kind of hit up earlier in the in the podcast, if you will. I, I It's hard to tell because things rarely in life are so black and white that it's obvious. Right, like if you punch somebody in the face, yes, that's a real obvious. But when it comes to business and this sort of stuff, like these companies aren't dumb. They know what they're doing. They're finagling it. I mean, I think you could look at Microsoft right now and they say, look, we're not under scrutiny for our AI stuff like publicly or whatever else. So we're going to keep snatching things up until we are because we are going to cement the fact that we need to be the leaders and we will spend money at all costs to get there. And so uh, it's too early to tell... I want to get too caught up in what the exact argument is right now until things go to court. And the court, that court case, my friends, is going to be spicy. There is going to be a lot of leaked, not leaked, but like, you know, the evidence. Just think about how the Xbox and Activisions of all those details that we got, all that information, all that stuff is going to be coming out on the Apple side too in the court case. So we'll have a lot of things to dig through. But yeah, uh, standby effective performance of Windows. So on paper, it's not supposed to. It shouldn't. It should not. That is what Microsoft wants you to know, is that putting it into those modes, like the standby and hibernate, should not impact performance. I have said my piece of what it should do. 
However, restart your PC every once in a while. I can't explain it, and I don't know for sure, but it just feels like every... We all know, like, if something's wrong, reboot your PC, right? It just fixes things. That's just the nature of Windows and technology in general. And so... On a day-to-day -day basis, no, you really shouldn't notice anything, but make sure you restart your PC every once in a while, and then you'll be perfectly fine. And uh, Yoshi coming in and says, ooh, ooh, he says, how are you feeling about the Reds this season? So for those international fans, the Cincinnati Reds, I believe the oldest uh, baseball team in the league with our home openers and our and our parades. Um, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I mean, they got real hot last year, and I think they have the ability to be... I'd like to think they'll be have the ability to be better last year, but much like the Bengals, I have been heartbroken by the Reds, thinking, man, like the Sean Casey era and a lot of these other things, um, you know, the Joey Votto eras and all that stuff, like thinking, man, this is this should be it. Like, we've got a squad, and then it just... Just it never works out, um, except for 1990 when the last time they won the World Series. There have been some good teams in between. I, I'm not saying we haven't had anything since 1990. Uh, there have been some teams in between, or some years in between. And so, yeah, we'll see. You know what? Baseball season's here. It's always fun to, to watch. So, Mr. PKI shutting it down this week with three. I count that one, a two, and a three questions. <laughs> he says, what are you testing to be? Uh, oh, what are you testing to be live on your Windows 11 lock screen? I don't want anything on my lock screen, candidly. That's just not something. Could this not be dangerous for having a live feed being shown when you're always away from your desktop in a business environment? So I think that's part of the, the real crux here. So these widgets are living under the screen. We don't know all the widgets that are going to be available, but imagine there's a OneDrive sync widget at the end of the day, and it's like, here's your last stuff, or a co-pilot widget, and it's like, here's your last four meetings that you were, or you were in, or you, four meetings you have coming up uh, microsoft could be smart and say like look if you don't recognize the face in front of the device don't show that sensitive information i'd like to think microsoft has the goodwill and knowledge to not put sensitive information on the lock screen candidly the thing i'm more worried about is a stupid msn article showing up there that's like slightly embarrassing for that to be on your device and like things you don't care about like politics or something else and people walk by and see it, it's like oh brad must really love the politics in ohio because he's got that on his lock screen it's like i never intended that to be there his second question, is Skype dead or not? I cannot tell. Is everyone moving to Teams or is Skype the consumer going to live on? I don't, so there's like this core, I don't know what, I, for some reason I thought it was like Brazil or somewhere. There's parts of the world that still use Skype in some meaningful capacity. I use it a little bit to chat with Paul Therott, um, but nothing else really beyond that. So Teams is the future, at least on the business side, even the brand side, although that Teams consumer app, I think is definitely going away and I think Skype will continue to live on, but that's that. And then Mr. PKI says, uh, he says, I've heard some Windows servers are crashing. Is this from the latest update? So there's a, I think it was domain controllers that were having issues. There's a, there's a, because I think Stardock was like looking into this stuff. There were issues with domain controllers not getting a great update and just spontaneously rebooting or something like that. Somebody with more knowledge can definitely chime in in the comments if that has happened to you. But it definitely feels like there's something going on with the latest update at the end of the day. So, there you go, my friends. That wraps it up for this week. Uh, there may not be a podcast next week because I am going away with the family here for a little bit. And so, yeah, uh, I don't know if I'll be doing one next week. So just keep your eyes and ears peeled. Hopefully you had a wonderful week. And as always, my friends, make sure to keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this podcast is me.